Scientists are keeping an eye on some new COVID-19 variants. We asked Dr. Maya Artandi with Stanford Healthcare if there's any cause for concern. So viruses constantly change through mutation, making new variants. A variant has one or two or 10 new mutations that distinguishes from it from the other variants that are already around. We know that COVID-19 or SARS-CoV-2 has changed and mutated many times since the start of the pandemic. Based on how concerning the variants are, they are divided into three groups. There are the variants of interest. For example, Lambda is a variant of interest. Then there are the variants of concern. For example, Delta is a variant of concern. And then there are variants of high consequence. And fortunately, so far, we have not had a variant of high consequence. And then there are 13 other variants that don't have any Greek letters yet that the WHO is following. Now, C12 is the latest variant. It was discovered in May in South Africa and has now been detected in all the South African provinces. It's neither a variant of interest nor a variant of concern yet. Now, why is the WHO then following C12? And the reason for that is that this particular variant has many more mutations than any of the other variants, even, of, even in the variants of concern. Um, some of those mutations that this variant has theoretically could make it much more contagious and much more able to evade the immune system. But again, that's theory. So far, only about 100 cases of C12 have been detected since May. And so I don't think we need to lose any sleep over that variant yet. We also asked about breakthrough cases. We know they do occasionally happen and that the vaccines normally prevent serious illness. But what can people expect if they do get a breakthrough case? So you are really unfortunately right that now we have a much higher rate of breakthrough infections than before. In May, when Delta was not around that much, vaccinated people had a much lower risk of getting a breakthrough infection than people who are not vaccinated. So unvaccinated people had an eight time higher risk to get an infection. As of July 25, now Delta is around. So unvaccinated people only have a five times higher risk to get an infection than um, vaccinated people. Now, the good news is that the vaccine is still really, really great in preventing severe disease, hospitalization, and death. But even people who have mild disease and case stay home can feel terrible. Um, so I have patients who tell me it feels like they have been dragged along by a truck, high fever, body aches, cough, shortness of breath, headaches, you name it. And that can last for many days. And in some people it can even last longer. But again, the point I wanna make is, even if you can get a breakthrough infection, if you have been fully vaccinated, your chance of ending up in the hospital is really much, much, much lower. And as students return to school and with children under 12 still unable to get the vaccine, we asked, how do you keep your child safe from the Delta variant? So I think as parents, we are all in it together and we all have to work together to protect our kids and ourselves. So the first most important thing is, Everybody who can get the vaccine should get the vaccine that protects you and it protects your kids. The next thing is that kids should wear masks that fit well. So they need to cover the nose and the mouth without any gaps. They should be comfortable. It's fun if they have any cool designs. Kids want to want to wear them and they should be comfortable enough for them to wear them all day long, even in school. Now, if your kid is sick, please don't let the kid go to school keep them at home, contact your pediatrician, figure out if they need a COVID test. It's a good idea to plan ahead and already have a site where you can get your COVID test, um, where you can just walk in and it's a quick turnaround. Now, if the kid does not have COVID, wonderful. If they do have COVID, don't panic. Most infections in children are still very mild. Keep them at home until 10 days after symptom onset or 24 hours after the last fever without any fever allowing medication. Now, if they have been exposed to COVID in school and they're not vaccinated, keep them at home, wear a mask, quarantine them and get the COVID test as soon as possible. 
And a new poll shows vaccine hesitancy has fallen to its lowest level since the pandemic started. We asked Dr. Artandi about the primary concerns she hears from patients who are still reluctant to get vaccinated. I think it's really great news that people are no now more likely to get vaccinated. So when you look at the CDC vaccine tracker, currently about 63% of Americans have been fully vaccinated and 74% have gotten at least one shot. And as you just said, the likelihood of people saying, oh, I did, really don't want the vaccine is much lower. It went from 34% just a few months ago to now only 20%. What has changed? So the reason why people are now more likely to get the vaccine is number one, Pfizer just got full FDA approval. So it's not just an emergency authorization anymore. Number two, employers now often mandate that the employees get the vaccine. Number three, people are scared of Delta. And really, it's good to be scared of Delta. Delta is scary. And number four, insurers are now not going to cover 100% of COVID care anymore. So people who end up in the hospital will have to pay if they don't have insurance for hospitalization or at least the deductible and co-pays that can be expensive. And people who have not been vaccinated have a 29 times higher risk of ending up in the hospital than people who are fully vaccinated. Now, there are still people who are reluctant to get the vaccine. And it's you can't just throw them all in the same box and say, okay, that's the reason. There are many, many different reasons why people are hesitant. Um, one reason is people still think, oh, I'm strong. My immune system is great. COVID is not that bad. I can fight it without a vaccine. Um, people are also worried about the safety of, vac of the vaccine. So I think it's a good idea to, if you know someone doesn't want to get the vaccine, sit them down and figure out why, and then try to convince them.